Well, today is a very sad day because this is the last time you will ever see this logo on this channel. And that's because we have an entirely new set of SketchUp logos that have been introduced with SketchUp Pro 2021. So we're gonna talk about the new features, the new logos in this video. Stay tuned. So yeah, this is the new SketchUp logo. I, you know, whenever you see a new, like complete new branding of something, it's always like really shocking and surprising and you're like, ah, why are you doing that? Um, but I gotta say, this really grew on me pretty quickly. I, um, it took me a couple days, but I, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. Um, one thing that was pointed out to me that I thought was really clever is if you kind of study this, you can see like an S and a U for SketchUp. And then if you look at the blue here, you have a three and a D for 3D. So I don't know, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, we actually have new logos for SketchUp, Layout, 3D Warehouse, Extension Warehouse, and Style Builder. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you're welcome to file a complaint in the comment section below uh, and tell me how, uh, how awful this is. But I am going to move on to the new features of SketchUp 2021, starting with tag folders. So tag folders have been added to the tags panel. So obviously this allows you to organize your tags a lot better than just having a big long list. Uh, if you're like me, you may have used prefixes in the past to kind of force a sorting order and kind of group together uh, the different tags that you have in your model. But now you can just create a folder. So in this model, I have location tags object tags, I have uh, pricing tags, and special tags. So the thing that's cool about the tag folders is you can hide many tags all at once with just a single click. So just by hiding the folder, all the tags that are in the folder will also um, be become hidden without toggling their hidden state. So it's, it's inheriting that uh, that visibility state from the folder they're nested within. And to create a folder, it's really easy. You just click the add tag folder, and then you can add a tag uh, to that folder. Um, the, other, the other thing you can do is, let's say you have multiple tags, you can hold down shift and select several tags, and then click the add tag folder, and that will create a new folder and automatically place those selected tags within it. And you know, this behaves pretty much as you'd expect. You can drag and drop uh, tags in or out of the folder. So I can pull that out. I can drag this back into the folder. You can even have uh, folders within folders. So I can drag this in here and now I have one folder within another. Uh, you'll notice here that the folder names do not have to be unique. However, the tags still do need to have a unique name. So just keep that in mind if you, for instance, want to create an organizational structure where you have a folder for each level of the house and then you have redundant lists of like object tags that you might have on each level of the house, you still would have to have a unique name for each of those tags. And another thing to watch out for is if you want to delete a folder, all the tags that are in the folder are gonna just uh, move up one context. And so basically they don't, the tags that are in the folder aren't gonna delete if you delete the folder. So just keep that in mind. You, you would have to select all the tags first and delete those and then you could delete the folder if that's what you're intending to do. And on that note, you might notice that we've lost the delete uh, tag button. It's been replaced by the add folder button. So now the only way to delete tags is to right click and use the context menu, just like that. Now the second feature that we now have in SketchUp Pro 2021 is a filtering capability in the tags panel. So now we can 
filter by uh, tag name or folder name for that for that matter. So you just start typing the name of the tag or folder that you want to search for and the tag panel will filter for that. And when you have a filtered list of tags, you can uh, hold down shift to select them all and then do kind of global edits to them like changing the dash style, except for apparently right now that didn't work. I don't know why. There we go, that worked. I don't know. Now over in layout, you will notice that the tags panel in the, or I should say the, the tags sub panel in the SketchUp model panel will also reflect uh, the tag folders as they've been set up in SketchUp. Um, and, and really that's the only new feature we are seeing in layout uh, with, with SketchUp Pro. 2021 and layout 2021. All right, going back to SketchUp, we now have the ability to configure live components right inside of SketchUp. So you may have seen my other recent videos where I reviewed the new live component feature. Um, so to view the live components, you go to the 3D warehouse, you click the search icon, you go down to advanced, filter for live components, click models, and these are all of the currently available live components. Now we don't have the ability to create our own. However, we can download these that have been um, created by the SketchUp team, place them in our model. And as of this latest version of SketchUp Pro, you can now uh, configure live components right inside of SketchUp. So if you have a live component, you right click, you click on the configure live component option and this window will pop up. And from here, you can resize and you know play with all these sliders and type in, you know, type in dimensions here and, and kind of configure the component however you want. So I have a video that goes much more in depth on live components, and um, I'm definitely looking forward to how this is gonna be further developed because I, in my opinion, this has a lot of potential. Now, aside from that, behind the scenes, we have kind of a completely rebuilt uh, SKP file format. And so what that's gonna do kind of in the future is hopefully what they're trying to do is allow for more compatibility between different versions of SketchUp. So if right now you're using an older version of SketchUp and you try to open up a SketchUp file that was created in a newer version of SketchUp, it won't work. So with this restructuring of the file format, um, that's hopefully gonna allow more compatibility between different versions. You're also gonna notice um, throughout the year as we get more minor releases for SketchUp Pro 2021 um, that you'll get a prompt directly in SketchUp when you open the program and an update is available and you'll be able to download and install that update from right inside of SketchUp. So in the past, you'd be redirected to a website where you'd have to like, you know, select the version uh, of SketchUp that you wanna download and select the right language and all that sort of stuff. Um, now it's gonna be a more seamless experience uh, for downloading minor updates. As far as major updates, like when 2022 comes out, I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna work, um, but for sure this is going to uh, make the update process for minor updates a lot easier to do. And if you're on a Mac, there's some good news for you. In layout, you can now use the trackpad uh, to pan and zoom. Uh, so with a two finger pinch, has been introduced and then a two finger, uh, so the, the two finger pinch will now zoom in and out and then a two finger swipe will pan the document back and forth. So that's a nice little added feature for you if you're using a trackpad on the Mac. So currently that's not available for Windows, but it might be something they add in the future, not sure. Now, if you go to generate report, you might notice it looks a little bit different. So Generate Report has kind of been completely rebuilt again. So uh, you may have remembered a redesign for Generate Report maybe four years ago, something like that. Well, they went through it again 
uh, with the promise that it's going to make it easier for them to improve it in the future. Um, we don't know what those improvements are going to be, but basically it looks a little bit different, but, but essentially all of the features are the same currently. So hopefully we're going to see some improvements in the future. But this is, this is going to look pretty familiar if you've used Generate Report in the past. And lastly, we now have, if you're a SketchUp Pro subscriber, you'll now have access to pre-design. So this is a new product, which look at that, it's got its own logo as well. So pre-design is a web app that you can use. And what it does is it takes the project location and will assess the average climate data for that location and will provide suggestions to you on like the types of windows to use, um, the types of shading solutions that you can use to kind of help you make uh, design decisions that are gonna be more energy efficient. So to use pre-design, all you need is the project location and you just need to know the, the type of project that you'll be creating. Type in Providence, Rhode Island, and we can create a study. So first of all, pre-design will provide average climate data on the seasons page showing the average temperatures, weather, and prevailing wind direction. On the architectural response page, it illustrates four separate scenarios and tells you how often that scenario will occur at that project's location. So the four scenarios are, you know, too cold to be outside, want to be outside, okay outside if sheltered, and too hot to be outside. So in this situation, we can see that because of the climate, if we look back at the seasons, we can see that the climate, actually, let me change the units here to uh, Fahrenheit. We can see that the climate is relatively comfortable throughout the year. So in the architectural response, it places a really low priority on designing with the idea of it being too hot to be outside. So immediately we can tell that we need to design uh, most often for a colder climate. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see that illustrated here as well with this uh, provide shelter from the cold being the three star recommendation. And it provides a few recommendations here. And if you wanna illustrate that even further, you can look at the data graphed out over the course of the year showing you know how often you're providing shelter from the cold versus needing to provide shelter from the heat. Now on the next page, glazing ratio, you can select each orientation of the building and see two of the major negative effects that windows will have on the building. So the first one is going to be heat loss during cold weather. So it's you know pretty well known that windows are one of the biggest ways a building loses heat because windows typically have a much lower R value than a wall assembly. So if a project is in a very cold climate, having more energy efficient windows and reducing the amount of glazing area on a wall will have a higher impact on the energy efficiency of the building. Now the other negative uh, factor for windows is solar heat gain during the warmer climates or warmer months. So pre-design will provide an overall recommendation and get even recommend the type of glazings and maximum glazing ratio um, down here. But if you'd like to, you can scroll down even further and filter through different types of glazing, insulation, and uh, shading to see how each of those um, will have an effect on the project. On the next page, we have shading strategies. So you can see each face of the building, and this image shows where the sun will be at certain times of the day, uh, at certain times during the year. And it'll tell you um, the effects the sun will have on the building. So yellow means um, beneficial warming sun. So during the cold winter months, it's actually beneficial to have uh, passive solar heat gain. But during the warmer months here, we can see that uh, we will actually experience an overheating of the sun. So it'll recommend shading solutions. And if we scroll down here, in this case, since it's kind of like a 50-50, it actually 
uh, recommends not shading at all in this case. And then we have top lighting solutions and different uh, skylight recommendations. And finally, the outside spaces page, which shows the different uh, benefits of having windbreaks, rain cover, air movement with fans, heating, sunshade, and outdoor lighting. So this is all driven off of the climate of the project location and the estimated usage of the building type that you selected when you started the study. So this tool is available to SketchUp Pro subscribers. And if you remember, they uh, stopped providing uh, perpetual licenses for SketchUp Pro. So if you want this, and essentially if you want any of the SketchUp Pro 2021 uh, updates, you'll have to subscribe uh, for $2.99 a year. So if you currently have a perpetual license, you can continue to use the version that you have the license for, but they're no longer offering the maintenance package. So unfortunately, if you want the new features, you're gonna have to subscribe. And aside from that, we have several small bug fixes and minor improvements, uh, which I'll link to my review article if you're interested in um, you know, diving into the release notes and learning more about those minor improvements. So that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.